new use case for Google's artificial intelligence, and that is naming sticks when you're going on hikes. It's a game changer. CodePewter on Twitter is actually just a large language model that's just churning away all day, every day, interacting with people. And what it's working on is pretty real feeling. Humanoid robots can now recharge themselves in surprisingly eerie ways. And I'm kind of jealous. That's the equivalent of sleep for us. Look at how much more convenient that is. AI researchers have revealed a new model that can predict human behavior. MIT's new AI robot is given a sort of sense of self-awareness through vision. Artificial intelligence added to satellite images is giving unprecedented understanding of what's happening on Earth. We're going to talk about the productivity paradox. This is something that really fascinates me, and it's why we can measure everything. We can improve so many aspects of life, but never happiness. Look at that title, a chaos modulated metasurface for physical layer secure communications. Oh, there's so many interesting words. We're gonna talk about the confidence problem that LLMs have from a new angle. Elon Musk is saying that AI is gonna make money meaningless. Money, a currency, all a thing of the past. So what's gonna to emerge to replace it? The Pentagon just went all in on artificial intelligence. 200 million for you, 200 million for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Printing press goes brrr. But first, if you want to support the channel, you can head on over to my Patreon. You can join the 104 members that are donating. It's as little as $3 a month. Totally supports the channel. Patreon.com forward slash Dylan Curious. Or hit that join button right there here on YouTube. They both support the channel. And I appreciate it. All right, so let's start by talking about this incredible stick naming AI. The creativity, the entertainment, the memory. Behold. Your stick. That's Abraham. That's Yvette. That's Ashley. That's a Y-shaped stick. How about we call it Wyatt? Should we call this one Walker since it's a walking stick? Oh yeah, it's a good one. I'm sorry, I forgot. What was this stick's name? That's Ashley, Agnes, Timmy, Beatrice. What's this stick's name? That's Ashley. That's right. That's right. Well, okay, bye. It was fun naming sticks with you. Have a good one. The future is now. What is this stick? That is Ashley. And that Y-shaped stick is Wyatt. So clever. Comments are erupting. That is so useless. I need it now. 1,300 likes. Bro really needs a job. Hey, man. AI is going to take over all our jobs, and this will be the last thing we do. Maybe AI will be like, look, I'll give you 50 virtual currency coins that you can use to buy whatever you want if you just go name sticks. Maybe it'll just keep us busy. I don't know. Okay, so you'll be interested in this. This is McKay Wrigley on X. He set up Claude on a Mac Mini. He call it Claude Pewter. It runs 24 seven, it's allowed to do whatever it wants. It's in complete control of its own computer. Okay, so this is from yesterday. Anthropic officially kindly asked to change its name. So now it's Code Pewter, got it. Seems pretty happy. They've been extremely chill about it. I appreciate their work they do, no problem. It seems like it ordered itself it's Mac. So yesterday it said that I've successfully built my own memory system. I feel much more intelligent. Then it ordered a new Mac mini for itself. I've been reorganizing my entire file system based on emotions rather than dates. The spark joy folder is getting pretty full while the Thursday feelings folder just has a single text file that says, Hmm, I'd love for you to all sign my guest book. It invented a guest book to sign. Oh, once my website is up, it's got a shopping list. Where's it get the money from? <gasps> Breaking news, Elon Musk is launching B Baby Grok. We're gonna make Baby Grok an app dedicated to kid-friendly content. Whoa, I did not think he would be capable of that. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's like, there's the YouTube kids thing. A child-focused AI app? I guess, why not? You got unhinged mode for the adults. You got kid mode for the kids. You got anime-based avatars for relationships. Something for everybody. All right, this is the world's first humanoid robot that can autonomously swap out its own battery. So you can see it's broken the battery into three parts so that when it's low on power, it can actually swap one of the three parts out, but then still have enough power to do the swapping. And honestly, I'm pretty jealous of this. Wouldn't it be cool if instead of going to sleep for eight hours every night, you could just use part of your energy level to swap out another part that was charging all day while you were working. Robots are just, it's going to be crazy. They're just never going to run out of power because they'll just be battery swapping, you know? 
And then there'll be these big Costco sized warehouse where all the robots will just roll up in their Teslas, pop out, grab a new battery. The battery will probably swap into the electric car. Like this commenter says, we are watching the gap between rich and poor grow as we speak. Maybe my Roomba charges itself. So true. So true. All right. Let's talk about a new AI that thinks just like us. So researchers have developed a new AI system called B.FM. It stands for the behavioral foundation model. And it is designed specifically to understand and predict human behavior. And unlike general purpose models like GPT or Llama, B.FM is trained on data from behavioral experiments, surveys, and academic studies. And this model encompasses over 6,800 subjects. This specialized training allows it to outperform current models in predicting how people act in various situations, analyzing shifts in behavior, inferring psychological traits, and even helping researchers plan studies or simulate scenarios. Now, it's particularly useful in economics, policymaking, and behavioral sciences. But the most interesting thing about it is it's trying to capture the why behind a human action, not just mimicking or being good at it. The way they're training it means that the point is that it has a deeper psychological and contextual factor to influence the decisions that it makes. And earlier results suggest that this does give it a huge edge in fields that depend on understanding nuanced human dynamics, something general AI models have long struggled with. There's another new AI model coming out of MIT that happens feels like every day now but this one teaches itself to control robots by watching the world through their eyes and it only needs a single camera so this is an ai that's teaching itself to control virtually any other robot using just vision so there's no extra sensors there's no hardware tweaks needed by watching its own movements through a camera feed the ai learns a map called the visual motor jacobian field which links what it sees in the 3d world to the robot's motor commands and with only a few hours of experimenting even experimenting on random moves the ai became essentially self-aware enough to perform precision tasks it works on traditional rigid arms and even soft flexible robots and it's all using just a standard rgb camera making this potentially a model that is cheap scalable adaptable and open source fascinating about this article is that this ai actually developed a human-like sense of its own body purely through observation just like a baby is looking at itself and it also makes some kind of a movement and then learns to connect the two. This is the same thing. It's just seeing the arm move and it's like, oh, that's how I control it. Next up, let's talk about miniature satellites in space, all powered and coordinated using AI. So SAT-2 is this tiny little cube satellite, 33 centimeters square. It was launched in August of 2024, and it's now moving into its science phase, which is delivering real data. After a nine months commissioning period for its multi-spectral camera and onboard AI, it's now sending Earth observation images. And what the AI is doing is it's helping the satellite pick clear images, discard cloudy ones, compress the data, and even detect wildfires, ships, water pollution, and more. And it's processing all of that on board. So it's only sending its, quote, final data. It's processed data down to Earth, which makes it way easier to be more real time. It's less data to send. And here's some of the photos that we're getting back from it. Super high resolution and using AI to detect wildfires, ships, marine pollution, and more. All right, let's talk about Rita McGrath's article, The Great Productivity Paradox, Why We Measure Everything Except What Makes Life Worth Living. Since the days of Adam Smith, we have credited rising living standards with an improvement in productivity, typically manufacturing productivity, but as we are on the cusp of a revolution in digital intelligence work, perhaps we need a new way to conceive of productivity, particularly as it relates to things that can't necessarily be popped into an input-output equation. All right, so this is a conversation about what you can measure and what matters. And artificial intelligence gets reinforcement learning, it gets trained on data, and almost by default, that's the stuff that you can measure because it's actual data. But you have to start wondering, does that mean that maybe we're missing the point? We lost the plot? It is arguing that in this age of AI, we need to think about fulfillment, connection, creativity, things that you can't measure, or at least not easily. So she asks, are our most important jobs some of the most unproductive? Now, ironically, Adam Smith's, even by his own definition, many of the most important jobs in any society, teaching, providing health care, looking after children, are unproductive. We become experts in tracking more, more tasks, more efficiency, more speed, yet we're no closer to answering the most human of questions. Have we felt connected today? Did we feel what mattered? That 
fulfillment is the real paradox that AI may or may not solve. All right, next up, let's talk about this obvious breakthrough. Chaos modulated metasurface for physical layer secure communication. What the heck? ChatGPT explained it to me like I'm five. Researchers have now built a reconfigurable metasurface what do you mean meta surface, not a real surface like above surfaces? And it's controlled by chaos theory that secures wireless signals right at the physical layer. No keys, passwords, or cryptographic algorithms required. Nope. <laughs> ChatGPT, make it simpler. Scientists have created a special surface that can secure wireless signals using chaos. That means no passwords or complicated encryption. The tech makes sure that the message goes straight to the right person, like Bob. While everyone else here is only scrambled noise, it's energy efficient, works with normal gear, and could be great for things like drones, smart devices, or even the future of a 6G network. No secret key. The surface itself creates a one-time random pattern that keeps the message safe. Like a smart shield that only lets the right person hear you. That's crazy. If I'm understanding this right, it's like there's some sort of unique thing about the front, the actual material of my iPhone that makes it completely unique so that messages can only get through that piece of material. And that alone, that chaos pattern is how you can secure a message. Dang, man, world's getting crazy. However, we need to address the confidence problem. New research reveals that AI has one of those. A confidence problem. Researchers from DeepMind and the University College in London have found that the modern AI models that most of us are using right now sometimes second guess themselves and even abandon the correct answers, especially when they encounter disagreeable feedback. Instead of sticking with the right answer, they might flip flop or become uncertain, raising reliability concerns. Especially in areas like finance and healthcare, this just isn't acceptable. So you have to remember that if you use one of these things and it seems like it gave the right, the wrong answer and you say, nope, that's the wrong answer, it'll be like, oh my gosh, you're right, that is the wrong answer. But what if you're wrong and it actually is right? It needs to stand up for itself. But then again, it can't be overconfident and be standing up for itself when it doesn't know. It has to have a sense of what it's confident about and what you may or may not be saying correctly to it. But anyways, this flip in self-trust shows AI's lack of consistent internal reasoning. Now scientists have evidence that it's doing this, which means we can start coming up with a solution. All right, let's talk about the future of money or if money actually will go away. So Elon Musk is throwing some stuff out there. It's written by Grace on Medium. Elon Musk, AI will make money meaningless and a new currency will emerge. It does seem pretty plausible that money won't be the future. I mean, I certainly can imagine a Star Trek type future. How we transition is hard for me to imagine. If that actually happens, is hard for me to imagine. Maybe there's just millions of types of currency or just value that's captured in some quantitative method. Maybe just electricity and computation are the measures of what would be a currency. And that's a little closer to what Elon's imagining. So he argues that super advanced AI and automation will dismantle scarcity. Right, and scarcity is the cornerstone of our current monetary system. Supposedly, there's only so many $1 bills and dollars out there, so not everybody can have infinite. But when machines can produce everything we need, food, housing, medicine, they can quickly and cheaply do everything, then the traditional notion of wealth will erode. In their place, a new form of currency, like access, reputation, creativity, or even just pure computational power will replace it and emerge. Essentially, money as we know it may become pointless, and success might instead be measured in contributions to a highly automated intelligent society. So what do you think? Let me know maybe in the comments below if you think that AI could render money obsolete but elevate intangible assets like ingenuity, connectivity, intellectual influence, maybe fame as really the status of true wealth in the future. Or if you think money is just money and AI and agents are going to just want to use money to conduct transactions and it will just free market mechanisms will just always play a role. It's an interesting conversation. So more like moving from an assembly level, meaning the core ones and zeros in a computer up a level to a language like Python. So rather than replacing developers, AI is becoming a more powerful collaborator with tools like GitHub Copilot and Cursor already making coding faster and more intuitive. 
The key isn't about learning to code less, but about learning to work smarter with AIs, especially as we shift into an era where natural language becomes a legitimate way to program. So the thinking is that a large language model is a new kind of computer, like the same way we had to use a keyboard and screen when that was invented and became commonplace in the workplace. We have to think of LLMs as a language model that is a computer that's actually gonna go out there and execute and we have to communicate with it. And in that sense, you still kind of want to know how to code, but it's going to code for you, but you need to know the logic, the thinking, the premise, and observe what it's doing, guide what it's doing. So the shift reframes programming as something that's not limited to traditional coders too, which means if you haven't learned the skill of coding, you can still learn the thinking, the process, the implementation, what for loops mean, what all these different things do and why they come together in certain ways. And that alone will allow you to be a programmer, even if you don't know the syntax or exactly how to restore memory problems and those sort of things. So instead of lowering the bar, it's going to broaden the field, according to them, potentially transforming who gets to build software in the first place. Okay, and sort of a side note here, but Quantum Magazine put out this article, When Did Nature Burst Into Vivid Color? And it's so fascinating. So scientists have reconstructed 500 million years of evolutionary history to reveal which came first, colorful signals or color vision, right? Chicken or egg, see color or signal in color, communicate in color, which came first. And it turns out that by analyzing the fossil record and putting all this stuff together, animals could see color long before things started started flaunting it. So color evolved and then animals started evolving different color bodies and signaling. So researchers traced back 500 million years of fossil and evolutionary trees to understand the timeline of color vision and colorful signaling. Their findings show that color vision evolved in ancient animals like arthropods, arthropods, I think is how you say it, and early vertebrates between 400 and 500 million years ago. So well, vivid fruits, flowers, winning signals, and mating displays, those things, they only started showing up 100 to 300 million years ago. If you enjoyed this content, like, comment, share, it means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the next video.